In the rich history of toys, the inception of the action figure can be traced back to 1964, when Hasbro introduced a line of 12-inch tall G.I. Joes representing each branch of the United States military. And while the Action Soldier, Action Sailor, Action Pilot, and Action Marine all paved the way for the subsequent decade's worth of children's play value as well as the eventual adult collector-based display value, many collectors feel that the 1966 Green Beret outfit represented the peak offering of G.I. Joe's initial run on store shelves. So strap yourselves in for this deep dive into action figure lore as we look back at the progression of the G.I. Joe Green Beret from his time as America's movable fighting man to his days as a real American hero, where he remains popular even to this day. This is the evolution of the G.I. Joe Green Beret. Let's begin. The establishment of the United States Special Forces, or Green Berets, goes back to 1952 concurrently with the Korean War. They continued to play a role in U.S. military operations throughout the years, notably during historic global times such as the Vietnam War and Cold War, all while cross-specializing in unconventional warfare, counterterrorism, and search and rescue missions among their many abilities. It's safe to say that they are the best of the best that the military has to offer. The Green Beret further rose to fame in popular culture in the aptly titled movie starring John Wayne in 1968, and while the movie was critically panned, it did do well at the box office, deeming it a commercial success. And of course, many people adore the Barry Sadler performed song known as The Ballad of the Green Berets, released in 1966, and consider it as a signature anthem for this special branch of the US military. The brave men. Of course, the cosmetic and thematic inclusion of the Green Beret into the G.I. Joe, a real American hero 3 and 3 quarter inch toy line, occurred in 1987 with the introduction of the polarizing Lieutenant Falcon character. I have chosen to start here because this character was my personal introduction to the Green Beret, and will be working backwards to the tie-ins of the unnamed predecessor that was released during the 12-inch G.I. Joe era back in 1966, a generation before the toy line that I'm more familiar with. And as cool looking and cosmetically pleasing as his uniform was, Falcon was unfortunately something of a screw up. He gets duped by Zorana early on in the 1987 G.I. Joe film, which was his only appearance during the original animated Sunbow cartoon run. He also butts heads with his half-brother, the famous field leader known as Duke, and finds himself struggling through some tough training with Sergeant Slaughter and his renegades, all on the path to eventual redemption. Of course, by the end of the film, he's hailed as a hero, following a similar path to that of Hot Rod in the Transformers 1986 film a year prior. Unfortunately, his struggles did not end there, as he was portrayed as a drug addict during the Deke animated series that ran after the Sunbow run had ended. It's unfortunate as he was continued to be portrayed as a screw-up in animated form, though it's worth noting that he was a more serious character during his various comic run incarnations. The 1987 figure, in my humble opinion, is one of the more aesthetically pleasing G.I. Joes of its time. The camouflage pattern just resonates with not only G.I. Joe during this period, but with military as a whole. The file card denotes him as an O2 first lieutenant, giving him that officer rank, and his gear loadout consists of a shotgun, a backpack with antenna, as well as a black knife. Do be careful with the antenna and the knife though, as they are the harder accessories to replace if you lose them. Falcon would continue sporting his signature beret appearance with his version 2 Night Force release. He's got basically the same loadout, albeit with a different color backpack and antenna from the first appearance. 
His third appearance would be the 1991 Sonic Fighter series, and it sees a different camouflage pattern, and in some ways I actually like it more than his previous appearances, perhaps because he just looks good in grey. And there's also the Chinese Tiger Force appearance, which utilizes a falcon head, but is actually called Flint. Having said that, collectors that I have talked to consider this as Tiger Force Falcon for the purpose of their collection, as there already exists a Tiger Force Flint in the mainline 1988 release. While that covers the three iterations of Lieutenant Falcon during the original O-Ring 12-year run, along with one international release, I suppose it's time to look a bit further into the past and discuss the more generic Green Berets' first introduction into G.I. Joe, with an altogether different incarnation back in 1966. It has always fascinated me that the smaller G.I. Joe line I knew as a child wasn't where the line really started, and I've taken a backwards-facing approach to collecting whereby I've gotten most if not all of the characters I like from a certain toy line, then looked back towards the predecessor related toy lines that came before them in order to continue my collecting habits. I've done this a little bit with collecting some Masters of the Universe stuff, all while getting the big gym figures that formed the previous bases for them. And of course, with the Transformers, I've done this in terms of buying the Diaclone and other predecessor toys that formed the basis of the robots in disguise that were made famous by Hasbro in Western markets. In the case of Falcon, obviously the brash character portrayed in animated form has absolutely nothing to do with the 1960s Green Beret of the 12-inch line, but I personally couldn't help but make the connection for the purposes of my own collection. In fact, when I first bought this figure, the vendor sold it to me with a blonde-haired G.I. Joe base figure, but since the original G.I. Joes all came with various hair colors, I swapped the uniform onto one with darker hair just to make it seem a little bit more Falcon-esque. But again, that's just for the purpose of my own satisfaction in my collection. And while G.I. Joe was already popular in 1964 and 1965 among the young male demographic, there was just something special about the 1966 Green Beret and its particular range of accessories. The initial figure was offered in a uniform matching that of the Action Soldier two years prior, albeit with the distinct Special Forces service headgear. Of course, the popular window box release of the figure came with the more signature Green Beret fatigue jacket and pants, as well as an M16 rifle, 45 pistol with pistol belt and holster, combat boots, a handful of grenades, a camouflage scarf, dog tags, and a field communications set. You could also buy some portions of his accessory loadout in smaller sets that were offered. And there was also the Special Forces window box that came with a loadout but no figure but with an added bazooka as well as the bazooka set which could be purchased on its own and both of these sets came with two rockets that you could load into the bazooka. While the bazooka wasn't offered in the original Green Beret release, many collectors love having it in their collection and it has become synonymous as an add-on accessory set for your Green Beret. Do note as well that the equivalent Action Man Green Beret sold in Europe is often shown with a similar loadout but also includes a Silver Star medal that can go onto his chest. Ultimately, this was the first figure that I got for my 12-inch range of G.I. Joes, and it is indeed a great place to start, knowing that this is the first Special Forces themed figure to make it into the G.I. Joe line at all. Tying everything back to the O-Ring line of figures though, it should be noted that the 1994 mail-away G.I. Joe figure, known as Joe Colton, does sport the simpler look of the 1966 Green Beret from its first release with the Action Soldier fatigues, but with the Special Forces headgear. So from that perspective, the original Green Beret and even the original Action Soldier are probably better associated with the Joe Colton character than being associated with Falcon. Heck, Colton is even shown sporting the camouflage scarf that just looks so good on the larger figures. And while that more or less covers my deep dive of the Green Beret in both the vintage 1960s range as well as the 80s and 90s range of smaller Joes, it is worth noting that the legacy of the Green Beret in the modern G.I. Joe range is very much alive in the present day. Of course, there is the range of Falcon figures in the 4-inch line that began in 2007, very much carrying the essence and similar but not exact scale of the O-Ring figures. But at this point, I'd also like to take a moment and talk about the G.I. Joe classified version of Lieutenant Falcon. 
What's great is that he does have a more or less identical loadout to his smaller 1987 counterpart, what with having similar weapons as well as the backpack and antenna, albeit now with a removable beret. But what's also worthy to note is that the camouflage pattern doesn't match that of his 1987 counterpart, and it's a more uniform tone similar to that of the 1960s Green Beret combat fatigues. Yeah, it's a bit darker than that original Green Beret, but I thought it was something that I should mention. Of course, the head sculpt leaves something to be desired in my opinion, which I have noted in previous videos, but for the purpose of this stroll down memory lane, he does carry the torch of what the Green Beret represents as part of G.I. Joe, albeit now in the modern style and scale. Ultimately, just through following the character of Falcon, as well as Joe Colton to a lesser extent, I've ended up with something of a Green Beret collection that I can proudly display, both in terms of 80s, 90s, and even a 1960s G.I. Joe, and this is a collection that I am happy to share with the viewers of this channel as part of this discussion about the evolution of toys. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't go anywhere just yet. You can have a further look at my Evolution of Toys video series by clicking up on this playlist right over here, or for a look at an altogether different G.I. Joe video, you can click right over here. And with that, yo Joe, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks again, and take care.